Well, good morning. Uh, my name is Alex McKenzie. I'm with Exa Corporation, and along with my colleague Fabian Moroy, I would like to talk to you today about what we're doing to democratize visual realism, which really means how can we harness the power of visual realism to enable the engineers that we work with day to day to have more effective communication with their design teams and produce better performing products. So I'll give a little talk, and then Fabian will give a demonstration of how we're, how we're doing this. There we go. All right, so just a little bit about EXA as a company. What do we do? We are one of the leading providers of solutions for simulation-driven design. What does that mean? That means rather than using simulation at the late stage of the design process for a verification and validation, we use simulation in a strategic way in the early part of the design process where information you gain from simulation can be used to actually influence decisions about the design, the shape of the, of the vehicles. So fundamentally, we're a fluids-based solver. And so we provide solutions and information to help with aerodynamics, thermal management, and aeroacoustics. And what's different about what we do and our technology is the accuracy with which we can solve problems. And we talk about real-world accuracy. So we can provide really accurate analysis of how the vehicle is actually going to perform in the real world under real-world conditions. A second thing that's different about how we work is our turnaround time, meaning from the preparation of the models to the simulation to the analysis of that simulation, we've got a very quick turnaround process. And the last thing that's different about EXA and how we work is, as a company, we're focused on the transportation industry. So we have lots of people who are very expert in all the different disciplines um, applying to the transportation industry for passenger vehicles, on and off-road uh, heavy equipment and trucks, and into aerospace. And in fact, 14 of the top 15 automotive OEMs worldwide use our product, PowerFlow, for assessing um, aerodynamic performance. So the users that we work with are in the engineering domain. And increasingly, those engineers are under a lot of pressure. Okay? The design team, you know, we've heard a lot at this conference about kind of design forward or design first and thinking about the experience that the consumer is going to have. Well, in the automotive industry, they've always known that. So what really sells vehicles, aside from the underlying engineering, is the design of those vehicles. So ultimately, when it comes down to decisions about what's going to win, is it going to be the exterior shape of the vehicle from a design standpoint, or the engineering to get best aerodynamic performance, it's going to be the design that wins in the automotive space. At the same time, the engineers that we work with are under increasing pressure to meet ever harder and harder targets to meet, performance targets, especially now regulatory pressure for fuel economy and for emissions. So CO2 emissions mandated worldwide, as an example, 30% reduction is required over the next 10 years. And while all this is going on, in order to differentiate in the marketplace, automotive OEMs, are introducing more and more models. We have to do that to provide exactly the kind of model and the options that the consumers want to have. So there's been a 40% increase in the number of models offered in the marketplace by automotive OEMs in the last 15 years. So the engineering team, while all this is going on, hasn't gotten any bigger. So we've got the same number of people, got to meet harder targets for engineering performance with the same number of people. So the only way to do this is to use digital simulation early in the life cycle to assess the performance of the vehicle while the decisions are being made about the shape um, of the vehicle, which is one of the biggest impacts on aerodynamic performance. So creating beautiful vehicles that are also high-performing vehicles is really a blend of aesthetics and engineering science. And for this to happen, it means that the design team and the engineering team, they have to work ever and ever closer together. If we look historically, our experience is there has actually been not very good communication between these, these two teams. Okay, and if we look forward, that is going to be essential. 
in order to produce what we call a no compromise design. That means there's no compromise in the aesthetic beauty of, of the vehicle in order to gain aerodynamic performance. Um, and there's no compromise in the performance of the vehicle in order to get the shape and the aesthetic design that's, that's required. There's no need to add on, fix. Often what happens is there are fixes added onto the vehicle to fix the performance of the vehicle, and that will change the way that the vehicle looks. So nobody wants no compromise design. So in order for this to happen, there needs to be very clear, effective, efficient communication between the engineering team and the design team. And what we like to talk about is how, in order for engineering to communicate effectively with design, so what happens when you run a simulation, you get some information, you analyze the flow, you realize, hey, if we could make some changes in the shape of the vehicle, we can improve the performance in certain ways. So we have tools to enable the engineers to study some shape changes, make changes in the shape of the vehicle, assess that performance again with simulation. And now they need to go sit in a room with a design team and show what these proposed shape changes are. Well, this can be very tricky conversation to have because now engineering is proposing changes to the shape that are you know, essential to the design of, of the vehicle. So engineering needs to use the same language that design teams are used to understanding the shape of the surfaces that they're responsible for. And for us, we find that the use of realistic visualization is key to this um, effective communication of shape change. So if we look at an example here, on the left here is a typical way that our users would use to show here's a potential change in shape of the vehicle. It's a little bit of a dramatic example. Um, but we're changing the length of the roof, the height of the roof, the angle of the back glass, the angle of the spoiler, and some aspects of, of the diffuser. But what you can see here is that it's actually pretty hard to understand what these changes in, in shape are. Okay? And in particular, it's really hard to see what's, what's going on here. So if we switch to the other view, so if we can help our engineers who want to propose this shape change to do, do this with realistic visualization, now you can see, A, it's much more compelling, but B, it's, you can really understand what is happening with the shape change that's being proposed. And now that really gets the design team engaged in the conversation. Because they're going to look at this and say, well, you know, some of that's OK and some of that's not OK. You can go this far, but you can't go that far. So it really helps to um, engage and bring that conversation together and engage people in the, in the conversation. So in addition to helping the engineering team to communicate much more effectively with design, as we've been working with realistic visualization, we found a couple of other interesting things. And one of those is that by applying realistic visualization techniques to the analysis of the fluid flow, right, when you're looking at fluid flow, you're actually looking at 3D representations of the fluid, different visual 3D representations of the fluid to understand what's happening. Right? There are, it's, turbulent flow. There are structures in the flow. You need to find ways to understand that. By applying realistic visualization techniques to these structures in the flow, we're finding that it actually enables the engineers to gain a deeper understanding, to understand more quickly, more deeply what's happening in those structures of the flow. And the third thing that we found with this um, realistic visualization applied to showing engineering information is that it helps engineering to communicate the excellence of what they're doing. So this helps for both internal marketing to kind of um, explain and promote the value of the engineering department to the rest of the organization. And it also helps to uh, promote the highly engineered products into the marketplace. So it could be at conferences or uh, shows, trade shows and so forth by combining together, actually showing realistic engineering results along with realistic visualization um, really promotes and explains the value of precision engineering. So there's a lot of value here to combining together realism with um, deep engineering results. So why isn't it happening? The first is that the engineers, they don't have time. They actually don't even have time to really fully understand and analyze the results of a simulation. 
never mind make beautiful pictures and movies out of it. And even if they did have time, they actually don't have access to tools like DeltaGen. Amazing tool, but most engineering departments, they don't have the design teams have got this, got DeltaGen. The engineering teams, they don't have access. And even if they did have access, they don't have the skills to operate a sophisticated tool like DeltaGen. They're smart people. They could gain these skills, but they don't have the time to do that. So these are a lot of barriers, you know, practical barriers in the way of enabling engineering to use realistic visualization. So what's the solution here? Well, we thought, OK, so rather than trying to get the engineers to move into a realistic visualization environment, we need to w work the other way. We need to bring the realistic visualization into the environment of the engineers. So we've been working with 3DX Site to embed the new Stellar Rendering Engine directly inside of our product called PowerViz, which is the tool that our engineers use every day for analyzing the results of, of a simulation. And there are three aspects to this that we, uh, that we find most important. The first is that it has to be integrated. It has to be integrated into the everyday workflow of the engineers using, using PowerFlow. So that when they just do their normal work activity with a click of a button, they can get a fully realistic rendered scene. It has to be real time. PowerViz is a real time 3D analysis tool. So is Stellar and DeltaGen. So those two things naturally fit together. I can work real time, get everything fully rendered. Um, and so again, the normal engineering process, analysis process, is going to produce beautiful results now. So now it's not a special occasion, right? Manager comes along and says, hey, can you make me a really nice picture of this? And then that's an extra two hours of work to do it. No, I've already got it. Because what I'm doing every day, day to day, is already beautifully rendered. The second really key thing is it's got to take almost no additional time for the engineers in order to produce this amazing content. So it has to be highly automated. So we've done a couple of things there. One is that when you're setting up for a simulation, you actually have to do kind of a physical breakdown of the vehicle. You've got to specify what's the engine, which are the brake components, what's the transmission, what are the upper body surfaces. You need to do this uh, because you use that as part of setting up boundary conditions for simulation. So our engineers, they're doing this anyway. So we've leveraged this information and applied automated rules that will apply the realistic looks to these different components of the, of the vehicle. So they ingest the model into PowerViz. The looks are automatically applied according to this breakdown. Uh, the model is automatically placed into the three-dimensional surrounding. Here we leverage other information. When you're doing a simulation, you have to specify where is the ground. Otherwise, you're not going to get an accurate simulation. So we know exactly where the vehicle is placed on the ground, and we use that information to automatically place the vehicle into the three-dimensional scene. Okay, so automation is really key here to reduce the effort to almost nothing to produce highly rendered content. And the second thing that this really helps us with and our engineers is we have another product called Power Insight, which you can think of this sort of like uh, an automated content generator. Right? So here at 3DX Site, they talk about the generation of visual assets. So this is our own product that is already used today for generating hundreds of different scenes that are the best practice ways for analyzing fluid flow. And what Insight does is it drives PowerViz to generate all this content. Well, now we have realistic visualization built inside of PowerViz. Now this automated content can also be fully realistically rendered. And the third aspect is it's got to be easy to use. So DeltaGen is a very sophisticated tool. There are a lot of controls inside of there. So we took a really careful look at what are all the different controls and parameters for realistic visualization and really simplified those and only exposed a subset of those controls inside of, inside of PowerViz. We created a set of material libraries, stellar material libraries, that are just included as part of PowerViz. And again, we're focused on the transportation industry. So we thought about what are all the different materials that you might need for a vehicle, a truck, for, for aerospace. Those are just already built in, into the tool. There's nothing really to set up or to change. And if you did want to change those materials, one of the great things about the Stellar Renderer is it's physics-based. It's physical-based renderer. 
So the parameters that you use to change and to tweak these materials are very intuitive to an engineer. Right? One of the parameters, for example, might be the, ref the refractive index of the material. Okay? Our users, they're engineers, they're trained in this, they learn this first year in school. So very intuitive controls for the, for the materials. And then the second thing about Stellar is, as you increase the rendering quality, going from rasterizer to ray tracing to global illumination, that's just a click of a button. You don't need to tweak any other parameters. Right? So now the engineer just makes a simple trade-off of time versus the quality that they want to produce. So they can work real time with the rasterizer. If they want to produce a really amazing image, they switch to global il illumination and wait a few minutes or a half hour to get an amazing picture that they can get pick up in the morning. So if we can combine together the incredible accuracy of, of PileFlow and those results with realistic visualization from Stellar, that's going to enable our engineers to have much more effective communication of the proposals that they have for shape changes, increase that collaboration with the design team. That enables that to happen earlier in the process. And as a result, means our customers are going to be able to produce designs without compromise. So I'd like to turn it over to Fabian, and he'll give you a short demonstration of PowerViz with Stella integrated. So thank you, Alex. So I'll show you this uh, PowerViz using an uh, amazing model, uh, Jaguar XE, um, that has been actually optimized uh, un almost entirely with uh, using PowerFlow. And it was the first time GLR used uh, PowerFlow to entirely design a complete model, just using wind tunnel as some points, just like uh, the sign-off, for example. And uh, using PowerFlow, they were able to achieve an amazing drag of 0 0.26 with no uh, design compromise. Everybody can, uh, can design a car at 0 0.26, but if you you have to add the design on board with that. I'd like to show you uh, the model I'll present to you as well is a simulation model. So it's not been a model prepared for especially for CGI visualization, right? It just it has been simulated, imported into PowerViz, and that's it. So when Alex mentioned that it was fully integrated, for our customers who are working in this environment since years and more than 10 years now. Now we provide, we integrate Stellar, which is available by a click of a button. OK, so when I activate Stellar, it just runs on the scene, and that's it. OK, so as Alex mentioned, because we have a process up front anyway for the simulation, people can prepare, can integrate in this process the rendering too, and then it's fully automated. So I'd like to give you first a little uh, tour around this model to show you a bit the level of accuracy we put into, the, uh, uh, into our simulations. Okay. So keep in mind, this is alpha code. Okay. Uh, so it's not released yet to our customers. So we show it uh, first in public today. So this, in this view, I will hide the upper body and show what's inside the car, okay, and give you a bit an understanding on how much detail GLR puts in every simulation. This is an aerodynamic simulation. Okay, we're not talking about like a thermal simulation that we, we can do as well. But for aerodynamics, just aerodynamics, this is how much detail we put in our simulations. Okay. Now, PowerViz is a stellar, so it's a great tool to even create great pictures, but it's not the purpose of PowerViz. PowerViz, it's an engineering tool, and it's designed to provide content, analyze um, the flow on a vehicle, and ultimately understand the flow, and in the end, improve the product, okay? So I'd like to drive you through some 
uh, example on how an engineer can use this uh, new feature uh, to understand what's happening on this model. So let's keep this view with, without the upper body. And I, will, I want to see in the underhood Here I'm drawing a line. You can see it going through the, 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 the grills, through the radiator. What you can see up, th up there is a graph showing the pressure along this line. So as I can see, we have a pressure rise uh, before the, the flow hits the front of the car. And then we have pressure drops as it passes through the cooling package. Okay. So this line shows the flow only on this, uh, what's actually on the line. But because Porvis is an amazing tool, you can as well manipulate real time this graph. Okay? So I can real time analyze the flow through the uh, cooling package. And as an engineer, I can dis detect if, okay, if there is some points that I could improve. Like a left, right? There we go. Right? And because in this case, for example, the background, the surrounding you can see is a bit distracting from the actual message. I want to focus on the graph, maybe. So we design, we implement Stellar in always with that in mind. We're talking to engineers. So sometimes I want to sh see your background. Sometimes I don't. What I can do, this is all the surrounding available with PowerVis. And what I can do, I can enable the reflection only mode. In that mode, I keep all the reflection on the lighting condition on the vehicle, but I hide the background and I focus on the main message. The main message being here, the graph. And it helps like the graph popping out of the picture. Okay. Um, so I'll show you with the uh, upper body. So it's a bit difficult because <laughs> it's a bit far for me to see. Exterior. Here we go. And now you see the same thing. I mean, I had the, the background, and you see the reflection on the car which is pre uh, preserved, OK? So it helps as well the model itself to get out of the picture and focus on what I wanted to talk about. But let's show the, the surrounding, because we're, here all, we're all here to see nice pictures. OK, so let's see the complete thing. And uh, let's move on to the next analysis. Right, so I analyze now the underhood, and I want to know now what's happening uh, around the car. So for that, Porvis provides a tool. Um, I don't want to get too technical, but uh, this is what we call um, isosurface. Okay, this isosurface represents uh, the energy loss of the flow around the car, to make it simple. So the bigger it is, the more drag is generated on the car. So as an engineer, I can look at it and try to understand where I've lost the, the most energy and try to solve the problem on the car by reducing and re intimately reduce this, um, this volume here and then improve the, the, the car drag or drag or lift or... So keep in mind, this is the today how people, how engineers, not only EXA, um, not only people using uh, power flow, but all CFD engineer works in that type of environment, okay? So we're bringing a great tool with Stellar integration, and I'll show you how Stellar can be used to actually improve the engineering process as well. So here, that's a great example. I can see this ISO surface, okay, and on the back, OK, I can see there is some on the side here. You can see this is look a bit flat, but there's something happening. I'm not sure what. Okay. What I can do is when I turn on Stellar, 
Well, the reflection here give me okay. I see there is more sh shape change that I actually seen before with the previous image. Okay, and I can see that here there is something happening. Okay, so as an engineer, I can as well. Uh, it helps me understand better the shape. And as a um, designer, would we'll use realistic visualization to understand the shape of the vehicle. As a CFD, as an anatomist, I can I can use realistic visualization to understand the shape of the flow itself. Okay, so I can as well change the look I want to apply on this CFD object. So if I want to apply, let's go chrome. Let's go chromey and very shiny. Or if I want to have something a bit more blended, I can with choosing something like. I can't see what it is, but can be bad. OK. This is pretty good, because it's not too reflective. It can still give me a good understanding of the shape. And I can see that here there is like something happening. OK. So I'll not go talk technical, so I will not go further in that direction. And the last, um, the last example I want to show you. So I'll switch back. Yeah. So I can always switch back and forth in the two environments, and it's uh, it's very fast. Okay. So some of you may know, but in modern cars, in many high-end cars nowadays, there is a feature, a dynamic feature called air curtain. The air curtain is a is a duct which is hidden behind in the inside of the um, of the bumper here. Donald Stella. And that helps to guide the flow in the right direction when uh, um, aside the tire. Okay, so I want to have a look a bit how it's uh, how it's done and and try to understand it. So for that, I will uh, activate a slice that is here. Okay. All right. And now I want to see what's happening through. Just before that, I'll show you what's the you know, regular environment nowadays for engineers. And now this is what we offer now. So let me uh, apply some glass on, this, uh, on the bumper. And then we can see through the channel what's happening. Okay, so here I change the material on the bumper. I just apply the glass material. As you can see here, we have a flow acceleration. So the more uh, transparent it is, the higher the velocity is. And I can see an acceleration inside this channel and then hitting the, the tire at this point. Okay, and again, Poivre is an interactive tool, so I can grab this plane. I can grab this plane and and browse through the channel. Try to understand. Okay, along the whole height of this air curtain, I want to have a constant effect on the tire. So I can design this air curtain to always hit the tire at the same position. Okay. So here, obviously, this is the productized model. So engineer has been working for years on this. So obviously, this is at the optimum, you can, what you can get. So I will not uh, make some you know, recommendation to improve it, because job is done here. OK. So let's go back to the next. So everything is really implemented in the interface that uh, engineers use every day. So you might not be used to this tool, but uh, for an engineer, this is very, very straightforward. OK. Go. All right. Now I'd like to talk more about the renderer itself. So that was 
about the technical stuff, what the engineer can do with the run rendering, okay? But still, uh, we made it very simple, but still very powerful and very capable. So I changed the view to find a, a nice view, so I can still use it. I'm running on a laptop, so I can still use the, the Porvis viewer to find a, a, good, uh, a good shot, okay? And then turn on Stellar. As Alex mentioned before, the great thing about Stellar is that I can change the, the complete backend technology, so the rendering method, and keeping the same look. And I'm always sure that the look I use in the rasterizer will, gr will look great in the other mode. So let's browse the other mode. This is rasterizer. And if I want to switch to ray tracing, look what's happening in this area. OK, I can see now the reflection of the mirror on the vehicle. And this is still usable a little bit real time, OK? But uh, it's clearly not the, the purpose of the, rest, uh, the ray tracer. It's not to use it real time. It's to mostly uh, snap great pictures. But I may want to go even further. So I can go even further and use, uh, just give me a second. And I'll turn on global illumination. So here I compute accurate reflection on the vehicle, and I will calculate as well accurate uh, lighting condition. And you'll see the shadow on the floor here will change dramatically. Okay, so it now it's iterating through um, it's iterating, so it's refining the image progressively, and the per that's in this mode. If I want to to save a picture. I would have to wait about between 10 and 20 minutes, OK? But I have the choice as an engineer. I want to save quick pictures. I can go rasterizer. Even ray tracer is very fast. Or if I want to take a very great shot and print it for a magazine, for a front page of a magazine, I can use directly Porvis. I don't need any extra other tool. I can just use Porvis, make a great shot. And OK, I wait 15 minutes. But at the end, I have a great picture picture. And I can rely on the look I was using in rasterizer. What's important to note is that we pro with Porvis, we provide uh, already built-in looks. And what you see here, it's only using the built-in looks uh, provided with uh, the software. So our idea is that for our customers, the engineers, they don't want to spend time creating looks. Okay, So we want to provide a look library that will cover like close to 100% of the use case that, uh, of our, our customers. So they don't spend time creating looks. They just use the one available and uh, directly render. They can if they want. But OK, and I want to show you as well, I can go even further on this to improve the, um, this image. OK, so I can go in the surrounding. And let's hide the background. And on top of that, I can even add a plane that will catch the shadow that is calculating by global illumination. That looks nice already. But I can go further. It's hard to see with the. Um, the screen here, it's a little darker than what I, was pl what I, I planned. And I can even improve this picture by applying a look on the ground that will uh, create a reflection of the vehicle. Okay. Uh, so before I can play with it, I can apply Chrome on it. And boom, this is that easy. It's not creating this picture, this kind of picture, and it's now very, very, very easy. And I don't know anything, if I don't know anything about uh, rendering techniques, I can use this. It's very easy. And I can even go and apply more complex look. OK, so this is just a mirror look. Nothing too complicated there. But I can pick looks. That's the look library available. So um, let's say solid paint. 
can see uh, so just a second well let's pick it here it's bigger okay and if I apply that I'll still have a shadow and have a reflection which is with a bump texture in it so it's not reflecting exactly the image it's reflecting like a yeah like a little fuzzy image with a nice effect and because it's it's poor this this is a great picture for the geometry but I can always add some results and even glitch GI it works and here I have a great power shot so we cover several a lot of different use cases for the engineers okay Our engineers may want to create very quick pictures I mean, use realistic rendering real time to be able to understand better the shape, snap quick picture for a quick presentation, or I need to prepare a conference um, front cover, and I have time, I have 50 minutes uh, machine time. It's not ma human time to prepare such a picture. And yeah, I can just use power and it's very integrated and very quick to create, to generate. So I hope you like the demo. The demo. And um, you can visit at our booth for more details. Sure.